Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Emma, and we are playing Dragon Age Inquisition. So we just got done speaking to Fiona. We're gonna finish making our rounds. The folly of General, not Sheraton. Four. And so it was that victory was absolute, and cheers were raised for General, not Sheraton. And so, buoyed by respect and admiration, not Sheraton stood proud and removed the mask to state her true name. For had they not accepted her? Had they not thrived by her leadership? Had they not become comrades despite station and mask and nonsense of protocol? And the answer was swift and bewildering, for they had not. And swiftly she was bundled away amid calls of imposter and spy, and other terms she could not know. For she still did not know or lay. I'm not sure what that's about, but it sounds... It sounds to me like the not Sheraton is an elf. Did something of importance, led some people, and then when she's like, Okay, good. Hi. Hello, everybody. They just revealed themselves to be bigots. Greetings to you, Inquisitor. I am to serve as assistant to any research concerns. You'll find my skills are exceptional. I hope they prove useful. You're taking over the duties of Menave? Yes. She said she was needed elsewhere and that I should serve the Inquisition to the best of my ability. What is she doing? I wasn't told. You were made tranquil? Yes, I am tranquil. It was necessary due to a willful nature that made wielding magic a dangerous endeavor. I remember that being a difficult time, but I cannot remember why. My skills are well used in my current position. Hmm. How can you serve the Inquisition? I am to aid in the research of all creatures encountered in your efforts as leader of the Inquisition. What makes you particularly qualified? I remember being fond of animals. I don't remember why. God, that's so heartbreaking. To be severed from all memory and emotion like that. What is your evaluation of how we're doing? Adequate. Based on the partial improvements to Skyhold. As you were? Yes, Inquisitor. Poor thing. I'm just glad we have saved Menave. Oh. Let's see if we have anything to turn in. Okay, corpse reigns. Works. Alright, let's head up. Leliana. On the condition of your charges, dear Leliana, you'll be happy to learn that your friends are doing well. Schmooples the second is still unhappy about his meal plan and tries to get into the pantry. I had to have a bolt installed, and now he whines constantly. The two little ones are still a handful, but good news, I have managed to discourage Bolette from relieving herself on the silk rug Justinia gave you. Blissien, from Tudor's Over, has been visiting almost every day to play with the Nugs. She's quite delightful, and Schmooples the second is fond of her. I suspect it is because she brings some sweets from her father's shop. I had to ask her governess to keep her from visiting the house, however, as someone tried to infiltrate it two nights ago. An agent of one of the blunt chards, hoping to uncover some of the Nightingale's secrets. I neutralized and interrogated him. His ability to withstand questioning was deplorable. Someone needs to talk to the Blanchards about their spies. All I had to do was put Smooples 2 in his face, tell him that he hadn't fed the creature that day, and your pet played his part admirably. I received your orders and will depart for Ferelden as soon as possible. I have arranged for Gardner, or Garder, there's no in there, to take over nug keeping <laughs> Sparrow. Can you imagine being this super talented agent and you get placed on nug duty? <laughs> I'm sorry. So am I. The names of those we lost. You must blame me for this. No, it was not your fault. We all saw who attacked us. We know exactly who to blame. I keep wondering if I could have done something different. When the first of my lookouts went missing, I pulled the rest back, awaiting more information. If they'd stayed in the field, they could have bought us more time. 
I was afraid to lose my agents. And instead, we lost Haven. You look out for your people. That's a good thing, is it? My people know their duty. They know the risks. They understand that the Inquisition may call upon them to give their lives. Our people aren't tools to be used and discarded. Your instincts were right. Their lives matter. Can we afford such sentimentality? What if Corypheus... We are better than Corypheus. Poor Liliana. She's just upset that all this happened. All right. Oh, maybe we have more to speak with her about. Let me make sure there's no books. I don't think we exhausted our chat dialogue. Your open support for the mages likely earned you enemies. Our agents will monitor the situation. If the most opposed can be identified, we may still turn this to our advantage. You're not planning assassinations, are you? <laughs> I was planning to unleash Josephine on them. She kills with kindness. Regardless, I applaud you for the courage to stand up for the mages. The Divine's death hit you hard. How have you been feeling? Oh, you are referring to my outburst in the Haven. I... I am much better now. Justinia was such a dear friend and there were so many things going wrong. Sometimes it's best to talk these things out. I was there when the hero of Ferelden defeated the Archdemon. We won the day, and I thought the Maker smiled on me. When the Divine requested my help, I went to her. I owed her that much. I sacrificed so much to do the Maker's work. But now, Justinia is dead. I was angry. I felt betrayed. But I shouldn't have let my emotions get the better of me. I'm sorry. Don't apologize. You were grieving and upset. I understand. Thank you. Now, enough of this. Let us think more pleasant thoughts. Let's talk about you. Me? What did you do before you worked for the Divine? I was a bard. An Olesian spy for many years. For a time, I also served a small cloister in Lothering. After the Blight, the Divine called on me to oversee her personal network. Wouldn't that be amazing if, as a rogue, we could get as our specialty bard? Can you teach me to be a bard? Being a bard is so much more than being a spy. It involves a keen understanding of politics, the ebb and flow of influence, the great game. The Bards is an intricate dance where a smile can be sharper than any dagger. The best way to learn is to immerse yourself in it. Perhaps when this is all over, I'll teach you. That would be phenomenal. Bards tell tales. I bet you tell some good ones. There are plenty of tales in the library. Perhaps you should look for them there. Oh, Liliana. I should leave you to your work. We can always talk later. All right, let's make yes. sure we've got everything. Anything I should know? It seems that the Olesian army is awaiting our next move. Some of the generals are sympathetic to our cause. Others are still suspicious. Our actions are under a great deal of scrutiny. I bet they are. You seem to know a great many people. I have made friends, and on occasion enemies. It's unavoidable. <sighs> You have a history with the Warden who ended the Blight, don't you? I count her among my closest friends. She's probably the only person I trust completely. I haven't heard from her in some time. She just disappeared. I try not to think about what might have happened. They say you spent some time in Lothering. Did you know the Champion? We spoke a few times. I seldom left the Chantry, and we never became more than casual acquaintances. I saw more of the Hog twins. Bethany in particular. She would spend time in meditation at the Chantry. And she seemed to like my stories. The other one, the young man. He was a little surly. <laughs> I did encounter the champion again later in Kirkwall. Those were terrible times. Was this when the Chantry was destroyed? No, 
That happened later. But even then, the news coming out of Kirkwall was... disheartening. There were some in Val Rayo who wanted the Divine to declare an exalted march on Kirkwall. Justina sent me there to see if that could be avoided, to gather evidence to calm those agitating for war. I guess it didn't matter in the end. Mm. We can continue this conversation later. You know where I am. I think we still had one more about Josie. Up. You seem to know a great many people. I have made friends, and on occasion enemies. It's unavoidable. You seem to know Josephine quite well. I met her a long time ago, but we didn't become good friends until years later. After the Blight, in fact. I'd just returned to Val Rayo, and she welcomed me back by throwing a diplomatic ball. She was the Antivan ambassador at the time, you see. The ball was... All right. Too many politicians. At midnight, Josie and I left to find a real party. We've been friends ever since. What do you consider a real party? It's not a real party until someone's small clothes are pinned to a chantry board. And that's all I'm saying about it. Oh, I love it. We can continue this conversation later. You know where I am. Hmm. <laughs> Such good callbacks. Apparently I can't fit through there. Or right there, I was gonna say. I don't wanna miss anything. A fine time to close a border. The news is dire. There are rumors that our warden brothers and sisters in Ferelden have all perished. Without the Grey Wardens, the Blight will take Ferelden. Then it will undoubtedly spread. It will go north to Navarra and the marches. It will come west to Orlais. The head will be an archdemon, and in its wake will come thousands upon thousands of darkspawn. We must be ready to stare squarely into the eyes of oblivion. Many of you have asked why we remain here when such threats are mounting in the east. The problem, you see, is not a new one for us. Politics. To say Ferelden and Orlais have been at odds is an understatement. These two are like dogs and cats. We wardens are allegiance by address only. But that does not seem to matter to Ferelden's leaders. Word is that the king of Ferelden is dead, that his successor, Loghain Mactir, decrees that no warden set foot in the country. Mactir, a national hero who helped expel invading Orlesian forces from Ferelden, seems to have it out for our order, too. Maybe he doubts our abilities. Maybe he is more foolish than the history books make him out to be. This is why we must wait, even as Ferelden willingly welcomes its fate. An address by a warden and constable Blackwall of Valshavin to his recruits. 9.30 dragon. Dang. Okay, what else did I miss? One over here. Note found in Skyhold's Rickery. Sadler. Baron Plucky. I don't care how many missions he's flown or how many lives his actions have saved. He is a holy terror. Nearly pecked out my eye the last time I tried to attach a message to him. All the dramatic flapping and squawking caused the sister to come over. You should have seen her look when she snatched the letter from me. If I had a weaker constitution, it might have killed me on the spot. I suppose she thought I was trying to murder her prized raven. And all she had to do was coo at him, and the baron hopped onto her shoulder, all sweetness, and nestled into her neck. How does she do it? All the birds like her. Is, is it blood magic? I it's blood magic, isn't it? From Weaver. <laughs> That's phenomenal. All right, so we've explored this tower. Mm -hmm. How do we get back down? This way. So I think we just have the grounds left. This should be the entire building. We've already looked at the, did we look at the dungeons? Okay, so this is back where we were. Hmm. Did we go in here? Any story? Please. Oh, plenty. Well, how about that? No Aha. Interesting though. Yeah, we can do this. We're here. Our struggle is young. I was trying to catch that dialogue, but to no avail. Fertile ground even here. This hold has everything. 
Excuse me? What the fuck is this? Oh, all right. Find seeds by gathering herbs in the wild. But I've been doing a lot of that. I guess I just don't have any seeds right now. Construction report. Scaffolding. Mm. Third fall in as many days. We need more sandbags. It's almost impossible to drive an anchor between these blocks. The place was built to last, but that makes it a fight to build it up. Bernal, roofer. Approved. The Inquisition needs its people on good legs. Sir Morris, quartermaster. Yeah. I guess I don't have any seeds yet. Alright. Inquisitor, Elan Vimal. Honored to represent the College of Herbalists and offer my services as apothecary. My colleague Adan was clear about the worth of your cause. I look forward to assisting him. Awesome. I look forward to working with you. And are you? I wasn't sure what to think of you people, but recent events have put those doubts to bed. All the mundane needs of Skyhold will be well tended. If you note anything special, let me know. I'm here to serve the cause we must. Awesome. I am at your service. Ooh. I take it you're a city elf, not Dalish. It's not a useful identifier. I am an elf. I was raised away from the Dalish. No, I do not know their customs. I'm sure that much was immediately obvious. It's of little concern. I have skill enough to be evaluated by what I can do. My associates appreciate my work. Oh, I wasn't meaning to demean in, in any stretch of... Well. Maybe people have devalued her work before because she's an alpha and that would make her defensive. Poor thing. That wasn't my intent at all. It was just... I don't know, an observation from one elf to the other. Maybe we could talk about the discrepancies in our childhoods in an, an educative, informative, bonding way, not in a one's better than the other way. What is your evaluation of our supplies? We are well supplied, and I foresee only better to come. Where did you receive your training? I studied with Adan after he left the service of the King of Ferelden. Well, when the king was no longer there to serve. Our College of Associates tends to meet informally. I've since been fortunate enough to serve various heads of state. They are all as good as another, truth be told. My skills and contacts are better suited to more imminent need. Are there others who could come to Skyhold? They are helping now. I have contacted many of our finest, and their influence is not inconsequential. They are not, shall we say, prone to take the field. But we will be well supplied. As you were. Awesome. Of course, Inquisitor. That was very helpful. I'm sorry for the misunderstanding. Oh, Don's right here. Haven was a cock up, Herald Inquisitor. But you did right by me and others. We'll pay you back. You know, I'm not I'm not mad at the Inquisitor bit, because at least they'll stop calling me Harold. Okay, so. Definitely need to go get some seeds. Oh, wait. Ooh, almost missed that. Letter to an Inquisition agent. My darling Wilbur, I'm so proud of you. We hear so much about the Inquisition in the village. It makes me happy to know that you are doing your part. I'm sorry about what happened to Haven. I'll light a candle in the chantry for the fallen. Please take care of yourself. I know what you're like when things get busy and the fate of the world hangs in the balance. You must take care of yourself before you can help save the world, you know. Don't forget to eat. You're still in the mountains. It must be cold and wet. Why couldn't it be a fort in the hinterlands? Then you'd be closer to home. Well, dress warmly. Shall I send you a blanket? Anyway, you should write me more often. I don't understand why you can't tell me what you're doing. You shouldn't keep secrets from your mother. Love always, mother. P.S. What do you mean I have to address the letters to Rector? Is that what they call you there? Why? Your name is Wilbur Quigley. It's a good name. Wilbur was your uncle's name. He fought in the Battle of Riverdane. We're all so proud of him. Are you ashamed of your given name? Why are you ashamed, Wilbur? Ugh. 
fucking spare me. I love how shitty, clingy, overprotective parents are such like a awful common trope that they're literally mocked in video games like this. Don't be that kind of parent. Don't do it. Be like Fiona, who loves her son. Hands off. Cares more about him and his future and his happiness than trying to foist her own shit on him. You get a title, I get the boot. I see how it is. I mean, thanks for my life. Please deserve. Wait, what? No time working. To me, get the boot is like a euphemism for getting fired. Is he no longer the quartermaster? Sigrid was the quartermaster, right? Or is he just a merchant? Bride of the Maker. Maker though I am but one, I have called in your name, and those who come to serve will know your glory. I remembered for them. They will see what can be gained, and though we are few against the wind, we are yours. Canticle of Trials 5-1. I wonder if they put this here. I mean, it's got growth on it, because otherwise I don't think it would be here because it's supposed to be elven. This ruin, that is. Maybe they lugged it over, you never know. Okay, so we'll have to head up there. Sorry, I'm going around the perimeter. Oh, actually cannot get in there. <laughs> Can we get in here? Aye. Right. What are you guys doing? Okay, have a good time. Fast travel. Oh, Mother Giselle. Ah, Inquisitor, you have finally come into your own. The Maker has put you on a difficult path. I pray you walk it safely. I remember our talk out there before we found Skyhold. It wasn't just the Maker who put me on this path, was it? The Inquisitor could never have been Cassandra or Leliana, or me for that matter. We are too political, too tied to the Chantry and all its failings. But I did not make you stand against Corypheus. I did not make you risk death to save the people of Haven. Only you could be the Inquisitor. I only pray the power of the Inquisition is enough. I'll do my best to earn this. You earned this in Haven. The Maker has chosen you to deliver us from Corypheus. You have the faith and support of everyone here. Never forget that. Now, was there anything else? It has to be super weird to be from a completely different background, to have your own gods and deity, and somebody, like, that you've never really interacted with before. Like, a whole group of people, not just one person, I should clarify. Are like, hey, you're some patron something or other from our religion. And you're like, mm, no, I appreciate it. That's very kind of you, but no thanks. And they're like, all right, Harold. And you're like, no, no. Do you know who the Grand Clerics will choose as the next divine? It is a difficult decision. All the obvious candidates perished with Divine Justinia at the Conclave. As Inquisitor, your actions carry weight. You may affect the decision whether you intend to or not. Whoever has chosen needs your support. No one else has accomplished anything against Corypheus. Can you tell me anything about Corypheus? I know nothing of the man personally, but the Chant of Light speaks of what he claims to be. No matter all their power, their triumphs, the mage lords of the winter were men and doomed to die. Then a voice whispered within their hearts, shall you surrender your power to time like the beasts of the fields? You are the lords of the earth. Go forth to claim the empty throne of heaven and be gods. That was one of the old gods speaking in their dreams? Yes. Dumat, as I understand it. In secret, they worked magic upon magic. 
All their power and all their vanity, they turned against the veil, until at last it gave way. That sounds like what happened with the breach. Very similar, Inquisitor. Above them, a river of light. Before them, the throne of heaven waiting. Beneath their feet, the footprints of the Maker. And all around them echoed a vast silence. But when they took a single step toward the empty throne, a great voice cried out, shaking the very foundations of heaven and earth. Corypheus said he found only chaos and corruption. The Chant of Light says that it was beautiful until the Maker himself spoke. And so is the Golden City blackened with each step you take in my hall. Marvel at perfection, for it is fleeting. You have brought sin to heaven and doom upon all the world. I never understood why people wanted to follow a deity that punished literally the entirety of humanity for a handful of people's actions. It doesn't seem very just or godlike to me. But you know. Corypheus seemed so certain that he heard nothing. He described it as dead whispers. Bitterness, perhaps? He paid a high price for his crime. Violently were they cast down, for no mortal may walk bodily in the realm of dreams. Bearing the mark of their crime. Walking bodily in the realm of dreams is exactly what Corypheus said he did. But the mark? Could it be related to the mark I bear? I cannot say. Perhaps Andraste saw clearly and we misinterpreted her words. It was always taught that the mark they bore was the shape of Darkspawn. Bodies so maimed and distorted that none should see them and know them for men. That is all I know of your adversary, Inquisitor. I do appreciate that she admits that they could have misinterpreted Andraste. That's, uh, that's a, like a half of a, a point for Giselle. Some of the Chant of Light describes what we've seen and what Corypheus said, but not all of it. The Chant of Light is the work of mankind. We of all people must accept that mankind is fallible. Listeners may have misheard one of Andraste's songs. Just one word sung incorrectly could change everything. And how many verses were stricken or changed for foolish political reasons, like the canticle of Chartan? Still, I would trust these words over any spoken by Corypheus. I hope they help you. Wow, that was refreshing. I, I honestly didn't expect that from her. That, that was a lot more open-minded than you, you get with most uh, religiously affiliated individuals, especially as part of the organization itself. You know what I mean? Because she's right. A lot of shit is changed. Uh, remember we looked up the Tirda Bright Axe and they realized that the translation wasn't actually axe. It was hafted weapon, and they assumed it meant axe, but what it was was a staff. And people were trying to gloss over the fact that Tirda Bright Axe was a mage because they don't want heroic mage figures in lore because they're trying to fear monger against mages to better control mages in the populace at large. Woo! <laughs> so yeah, take everything with a grain of salt, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Your worship. I think we had more chat with- yes, we definitely had more chat with her. I'd like information on how the fight against Corypheus is affecting the common folk. They are scared, of course. Many have lost homes or loved ones. I doubt many will sleep well until you have sealed the breach. I have offered what help I can. The rest is for the Inquisition. What more do you wish to know? How are our forces at Skyhold doing? Still in shock. For the most part, to see Haven destroyed so soon after the Conclave. You saved many, but still lives were lost, and traveling through the wilderness did not make treating injuries easier. For all that, though, more people arrive every day. Some are refugees, but others want to help. Your Inquisition is growing. I pray you use it wisely. We will. Do you have information on people elsewhere? 
The refugees in the hinterlands are desperate. Without help, starvation or war will claim many lives. Villagers in Crestwood are besieged by their own dead. They have sent word begging for assistance. People are vanishing in the hills of Empresse du Lyon. It may be demons or something worse, but they are terrified. More than that, I cannot say. It is a chaotic time for all in Olay and Ferelden. We did those, well, two of those areas already. I don't know if that means there's shit that we haven't completed there, or whether this is just dialogue and it's going to be there regardless of the completion status of those areas. What are you doing to help these people? My sisters and I have been tending to the injured as best we are able. Some refugees come with food, while others arrive empty-handed. I have helped ensure that all have enough to eat. Thank you. Beyond that, many simply wish the familiar comfort of the chant of light. It is little enough work to offer some comfort to those in pain. Farewell. I think we have Until even more dialogue. Time. Your worship. Dang. Okay, so we still need to do these. Growing up Dalish, I heard little about your Chantry. Can you tell me about it? Of course. Too many think that the Chant of Light should only be sung by humans. The truth is that knowledge of the Maker and Andraste should be open to all who wish to learn of him. We believe the Maker created us, and that mankind's sinful nature caused him to turn away. With Andraste's blessing, the Maker will forgive mankind once the Chant of Light is sung from all corners of this world. I always had trouble with the deity trope of, well, everybody has to be nice to me and worship me, or I'm literally going to damn you all. Oh, bruh, is, is your deity like a teenager? Like, what's going on? Are you all right? <laughs> why would you, like, why would that be your jam? What is your stance on magic? Andraste put it simply. Magic must serve man, not rule over him. However, those words must be put into the proper historical context. Andraste led a rebellion against the Tevinta Imperium, whose magisters controlled most of the world at the time. Even then, she never called for all mages to be put to death. She believed in peaceful coexistence. Wow! Uh, I really appreciate that she's using historical context because that really affects... Um, what's being said, why it's being said, and how it's being said. So that's very important to also take. She's doing really good of approaching a lot of these typically polarizing and uh, unreasonable subjects pretty reasonably. I, I'm, I'm admittedly a little shocked <laughs> and impressed. I don't recall the Chantry being as tolerant of magic as you describe. No. The Chantry is an imperfect vessel, pulled in every direction by those who would steer its course. Yet the Templars rebelled precisely because Divine Justinia was not restrictive enough. Perhaps the Inquisition will find a better way. Humans reign everything. Why does the Chantry allow only human women to become priestesses? The official doctrine is that elves and dwarves have turned further <laughs> from the Maker than humanity. And as for men, the chant holds that they are more vulnerable to anger or passion. But in truth, it is simply political. Added after Andreste's death, like too many of our beliefs. That's an interesting, uh, turned, I don't know, that paradigm turned on its head. I, again, it, it's, it's still just to keep people out of positions of power. And, and shitty and sexist, but like, it, I, I don't typically see it turned against men. That's usually what people say to belittle and denigrate women. I think I, I agree with her that I think it is political. It's more to separate themselves from Tevinter and their like, man divine. Oh, so <laughs> yeah, they're just, they're just being shitty and power hungry and greedy. If you don't believe these restrictions are what Andraste wanted, why haven't you tried to change them? Has the current state of the world not taught you the folly of fighting too many battles at once? Fair point. I chose to use what power I had to help peasants forgotten by the nobles of Olay. I believed 
there would be time to address their inequality under the Chantry once we had saved them from stuff. And, and there's so much to be said for that. It's, it's a hard thing to have only so many resources, so much energy and yourself to give, right? And you can't affect these enormous changes to the world, but you can do good on a smaller scale and, and try to perpetuate and, you know, facilitate good on, on a daily basis to the best of your ability. So I appreciate what she's doing. It is hard because you're like, well, why can't you speak up? And it's like, well, it needs to be more than just me. And I get that. I guess spreading awareness and speaking out is also important while also trying to effectuate the change that you are able to do. There were calls for an exalted march to put down the Mage Rebellion. What was your opinion? It was ignorant gossip. An exalted march only succeeds when it carries the will of the people. Even then, it cannot be undertaken lightly. People are too easily frightened. We cannot destroy everything they fear. An exalted march is justified only against a true threat to this whole world. It is an offense to the Merkel to use it as a political bludgeon or as a means of spreading the chant of light. I was about to say, I bet, I bet Lavellan is, how could she not bring this up next? A pity voices like yours were not louder when an exalted march crushed my people. That is a hotly debated matter in some circles of the Chantry. Your people had conquered Mont Semeld and threatened Valreo itself. They were not helpless victims. But even then, Orlais was the only nation to provide troops. It was hardly an exalted march of all the faithful. The Maker wishes his world to spread by example, not by war. We win no converts with blood. From what I know of the exalted marches, and clearly I'm not an authority on the subject, from what I know, humans were encroaching on elven land, or had already encroached, and elves were simply trying to take it back. Because from what I understand, a lot of this is an allegory to the way that North Americans treated Native Americans. Not positive? Help me out in the comments. Farewell. Make her go with you. All right, let me make sure. Of yeah, okay, God. I, she has so much more chat dialogue than I thought. Can you tell me about the original Inquisition? The original Inquisition was formed after the first blight, well before the Chantry as we know it. The Inquisitors were hunters, zealots, who tracked and killed cultists and dangerous mages. As Andraste rose to power, the Inquisition came into her service. Instead of hunting those who would do harm, the Inquisitors spread the chant of light by force. Not a good look. It must be difficult to follow the chant of light knowing how it spread. Indeed. I have always believed that the Maker wished us to spread the chant of light by example, not violence. In any case, once the chant of light had spread far and wide, there was less need for zealots. The Inquisitors became the seekers of truth and eventually the Templars. This is a dark chapter of history for the Divine to revisit. Do you know what impresses me most about the original Inquisition? They fought horrific battles, killed and died for their cause, and when it was time, they put their swords away. Perhaps the name was Divine Justinia's message, that when the Inquisition is needed, it will strike without mercy. But when its work is done, it will put its sword away. I agree. When Corypheus is dead and order restored, the Inquisition will no longer be necessary. I'm glad to hear you say so, Inquisitor. Is there anything I can do to help you or your people? My healers would benefit from more supplies. We have run short of even common goods with so many wounded. If you could deliver this list and the items on it to Quartermaster Thren, she could get us what we need. It may not seem like much, but it would enable my healers to save many lives. Can do. Farewell. 
farewell. Wow, that that was really educational. I really appreciate that. I'm not sure I could appreciate that my first time through, or that I could even register much of what was being said because I just didn't understand, right? But now with all these codex entries and games and books in my noggin, God, a lot of the implications of all of that. I need to touch up on the Dales. That's the only thing I was shaking on that I feel like I should have known more about. I'm actually probably going to look that up after this. So, now that we've, I think we've explored the garden fully, we'll head outside and go and see our friends in the tavern, out on the grounds. Make sure we explore Skyhold in its entirety. All right, guys. I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your day. And I will see you next time. <laughs>